Next, scientists have grown something that closely resembles an early human embryo without using sperm, eggs or a womb. The aim of these embryo models is to provide an ethical way of studying how stem cells form organs. Our health and science correspondent, James Gallagher, has more. This is a field that's been progressing rapidly and has now reached a significant moment. Take a second to think how remarkable it is that our lives start out like this, a single sperm fertilizing a single egg. But the first steps on the journey from this to us are poorly understood and researching embryos is legally, ethically and technically fraught. So this is where embryo models come in and this is how it's done. So there are no sperm or eggs involved. Instead, scientists start with human stem cells. These have the potential to become any type of tissue in our body. These are then transformed into the four types of cell you'd find in an embryo that was just one week old. Then 120 of them are mixed together. And you can see they start off as a jumble, but as they grow, this happens. They start to organize themselves, mimicking what a real embryo would look like 14 days after fertilization. And we can take a look at one. Now this might appear confusing, I admit, but we can spot some things in here. The purple cells around the outside are the ones that would grow to form the placenta. And as we go inside, the yellow cells would create a yolk sac and the blue ones would form in a real embryo, a human being. Now, of course, this isn't a real embryo. It's not possible to put this in the womb and make a baby, but it is similar. It even released hormones that made a pregnancy test turn positive in the lab. And that's what's exciting the research team in Israel. Yes, this does look like textbook and, uh, and, and, and the structures are there and it looks really, really good. This is a stem cell derived entity that has all the cell types, all the compartments that are known and in the right orientation which you know, hasn't been done before. For those struggling to start a family, this research may one day help. It could lead to new ideas for tackling infertility or improving IVF. And that's because these embryo models allow scientists to perform research that would be impossible on real embryos, to understand the crucial early moments of our development when miscarriage and birth defects often arise. So it's a fascinating issue to talk about it. We can speak to Roger Sturmey, Professor in Reproductive Medicine at Hull, your medical school. Thank you very much for coming on the programme. Good evening, Lewis. Thank you. So we're going to talk about some of the kind of ethical risks in a moment. First, though, I want to come to the potential uses. Let's start with IVF, because that's what we were just hearing uh, just there. How can this uh, kind of advancement actually be used practically? So I think it's important to understand where IVF struggles and where it fails. And one of the major bottlenecks in IVF is the ability for an embryo after it is transferred into the womb to initiate a pregnancy and undergo a process called implantation. That is a process that we do not have a lot of information about. And these models, these stem cell based embryo models offer us an opportunity to understand how the cells of the embryo interact with the cells of the, the womb to try and help understand what might cause implantation failure. So a potential avenue for research. Let's look at the ethical concerns. Are there any in your mind? What, what are the kind of arguments? Well, I think the important thing to say is that there is active dialogue going on at the moment in the research community, but also more widely, um, there's, there's a project which I can speak to shortly about that's involving legal scholars, bioethicists and funders within the UK to understand what some of the questions are about working with these models and how we can um, govern their use for a responsible manner. I would imagine the concerns that most people would, would have is the potential of these models. Do they have the potential to ever form an offspring? And I think we can say that at the moment, there is no evidence at all to indicate that these models do have that potential. And more importantly, there are already um, regular, but there is already a prohibition in place to prevent these models from ever being transferred into the uterus of a human or an animal. So we, it is important to re reassure people that at the moment, these there is no evidence that these have full developmental potential. Okay, how surprised were you with the overall results? Obviously, many people are very impressed. Many people are welcoming them, but the idea that you can nudge these cells and then they do go on to form like this kind of replica 
of a human embryo. It just sounds extraordinary. And it is, and I think it points to the remarkable capacity that the cells have to self-organize. It is worth pointing out that this work is incredibly impressive, but the efficiency was quite low. And so not all of the models were able to form in the way that we would expect or we might hope they would. It also builds on a long body of research by this research group at the Weizmann Institute and others. And so it is the next logical step from where we've been going over the past five to 10 years. Remarkable. And just uh, finally, how long do you think we go from something like uh, this, where we get the results and, and however extraordinary they are, until we actually start seeing any potential benefit from it? Well, I think we're seeing benefits immediately. We're seeing benefits in understanding how these cells organise, and that helps us to start to unlock how the early embryo forms. Remember, this is a model. So it is only looking at it from a model point of view, but we're gaining new knowledge all the time. And then we're able to apply that knowledge to our, to advance our understanding right now. It is a remarkable achievement. Uh, thank you very much for talking us through the various issues. Uh, Roger Sturmey, thank you. Thank you.